All right. Luke Martin, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm living the dream. Welcome back, everyone. This is our Feed A uh, Heart and Soul podcast. Um, sorry, it's been such a long time since we've done one of these. Uh, it's been very crazy with the um, sacrament season, which is now over. So I have a little bit more free time to do more podcasting and um, hop into these new topics that we're, we've been going over. I'm um, sorry there wasn't one for the last two topics, um, but hopefully we'll get right back on track and start going into these more um, since uh, I think they are helpful and I think uh, we can all learn a little bit from them. Um, so today's topic is kind of a big doozy one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's eschatology, yeah. uh, which is the end times. All right, so we're, we're going to be talking about heaven, hell, purgatory, and the afterlife in general, uh, which is a, the main part of being a Catholic. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's our goal. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> At least one of them is our goal. <laughs> yes. Um, but before we get started there, I want to um, introduce our new uh, seminarian. Uh, this is Luke Martin. Luke, do you want to introduce yourself and sure. tell tell the, the kind people at home <laughs> who you are? And Sounds good. Yeah, EJ, good to be with you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Luke Martin. I'm a seminarian uh, here for the year at Sacred Heart Catholic Parish in Salisbury. Um, yeah, a little about myself. I've uh, been in seminary for, completed six years of seminary formation with St. Joseph College Seminary in Mount St. Mary's in Cincinnati. Um I'm one of seven kids, a bunch of redheads, so it's a it's a lot of fun. Get a lot of red hair going. Irish, Irish, yeah. Irish, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, parishioners at St. Mark Catholic Church in in Charlotte, uh, under Huntersville, with um, Father Putnam, wonderful priest, and um, yeah, just very blessed to be here and love yeah. to talk about and learn more about eschatology. Let's do it. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that's a big one. Um, well, thanks for introducing and thanks for being here. Um, he's been a very helpful hand in his first two days here um my pleasure so <laughs> i am using you okay uh, to be on my podcast now sounds good uh, so this podcast will now be featuring luke martin and ej sideris and maybe some other guests sometimes let's do but, it so yeah so let's dive right into this topic okay of eschatology mm -hmm. right so we're talking about afterlife and that's kind of a weird thing to think about right um because you know the only life we know is this life right now yes um so Let's discuss this topic of the soul, right? And what, why do we believe there's an afterlife? Does the afterlife exist? How do we know this? Like, what what insights do you have mm. on this topic? And I'll give my inputs too, but I'll start with you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm older and I can do this to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's just so many ways of starting this, um, of, of approach a, a thought of eschatology, um, as you're mentioning. But um, I guess... Uh, there you can start from a natural approach of just human nature and um, uh, you can realize some things from that but then also just from a theological standpoint sacred scripture of just mm -hmm. that all of sacred scripture is pointing towards this pointing towards our Lord and the incarnation and by extension of that uh, by the the eschaton the end times mm -hmm. and true preparation for that of of heart mind body and soul uh, right and and yeah in our own private judgment and uh, after our death and preparation for eschaton the uh, eschaton right yeah and i think to add on to that i mean as you said divine revelation it kind of reveals this to us right um yeah. and we see in genesis 2 like what the, the what the soul is right the, the human beings mm -hmm. by nature are both material and immaterial right we have a body that's the one thing we can see right yeah um it's the one thing um we can see it's physical we can touch it so it's it's easy to believe but without the soul, the body's nothing, right? It's just a, it's just a corpse. Mm -hmm. um, that's the whole point of death. But that's what we see in Genesis two. It's like okay, God created the body, he created Adam, right? And then from the ground, he created Adam out of the dust of the earth. And it wasn't at that point when he created Adam out of the ground. It's just a body. It's a corpse. Mm -hmm. right? There's nothing in it, right? Then it says God then breathed life into him, right? And that's yeah. breathed life, which is the soul. Of the person mm -hmm. so the soul gives life to the person it's, it's something that is not physical it's something that is not i mean, it's, it's it's immaterial it's something that comes into the body and animates the body all right so yes 
without the soul, the body is dead, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing to it. But with the um, with the soul, the body is animated and it starts the things that we can do with our hands. So like so I can touch this. All right, now my soul can and see that and see like, oh, this is a physical thing. This is a table. Mm -hmm. Or like non-physical things like truth, beauty, goodness, all right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that is a, well, it's a map of North Carolina, but um, in the Lord of the Rings form. <laughs> um, but I can say that's, that's a beautiful map. Now what's telling me that? Well, beauty, it's not material, but I can, I can perceive something physical and my, my soul can perceive it as beautiful Mm -hmm. making a response to it um so it's something we can see that the body is uh the human person is immaterial material yes right so there's life to us um now what does that mean for the afterlife mm. how do we like how does how does that apply to us um or what is how is that incorporated into our, our understanding of the afterlife like what since we are material material you know we see people die Yes. right um that's a fact i think everyone knows that you know it's mm -hmm. an, seen as an unfortunate thing it's actually somewhat of a, a good thing now that christ has come right um so um but what if we see the person dies you know we're sad about it right mm -hmm. um of course but what happens what mm. like why is that person dead mm. So maybe you can say something to that. Yeah, so it goes directly back to what you're talking about um, with the soul as the thing that animates um, animates the body and gives life to the body. So when, when someone dies, that by definition, uh, if taking a philosophical definition, um, is that death is the separation of body and soul. Mm. Um, and we're... we're we're blessed. <laughs> uh, as humans, having human nature, we have that immortal soul. Mm -hmm. um, so that means once once God creates that soul uh, at the moment of conception, that soul will continue on even after the body dies. Um, mm -hmm. So when someone dies, there's the separation of the body and the soul. Um, and then what happens to that soul? That soul goes to judgment. Mm -hmm. um, it, we have we talk about the difference of private judgment versus um, I guess you could say eternal or perpetual judgment. Mm -hmm. um, and that is uh, the Lord judges our soul according to the actions, uh, actions, thoughts, um, lack of actions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, of any, uh, of all of that. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and from, by extension, it gets to our topic right now. Right, right. Yeah, so like what, what you're saying is like as the body is animated by the soul yes all right so the, as the, the soul gives life to the body it also takes life away right because the, the soul when it leaves mm -hmm. the body yes leaves the body mm -hmm. dead and this as, as as you said like the body um continues after death and the reason for that is because it's not material we're not it's not bound to decay yes all right and the knowledge the conceptualizing the memories everything that's the soul that's that's a that's a, a power of the soul right is I can I can memorize things I can I can conceptualize things I can know the truth I know the experiences of my life, and that continues after death because mm -hmm. that's all part of the immaterial. Um, and that's what that's what's going to be judged right um, mm -hmm. at that moment because the body hasn't returned yet. Let's just go ahead and just say that right now. We're not going to talk about this too much, but like as Catholics, we do believe the body will return um, in the second coming, and mm -hmm. Christ will reunite us to our glorified bodies. Um, and we'll be physically in heaven with Jesus, who is also physically in heaven with his mother. All right. But we're not going to talk about that too much. But I just wanted to summarize that. Like, mm -hmm. We do believe yep. the body does come back. We're not just going to be souls in heaven. It, um, eventually, we will be body and soul. Um, but yeah, this, that's how we get. That's what's going to be judged at the end of our life. Right. Mm -hmm. So immediately after we die, we do believe there is a judgment. Yes. Um, from Christ uh, and God himself. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, who's going to. Look at our actions of this world, right? That's why our actions of this world <laughs> matter. Yes, um, exactly. And he's going to, and the, by judgment, we don't mean like, God, God knows everything, right? Mm -hmm. So like he already knows what you've done. He's just going to confront us, right? And say like, yes, here's, here's revealing it to us. Like, here's what you have done. 
and since I'm a just God, I want to make it just and sense like I'm revealing it to you. So you know why you're getting this outcome. Mm -hmm. um, because the outcome ultimately is our decision. It's not, uh, it's, it's what we chose with our lives. Yes. Um, and that's going to apply when we talked about where we go, right? So where are the three places we can go? Heaven, hell, and purgatory. Right. Right. And so the, do, are they physical places? That's a great question. <laughs> so, like, I mean, obviously we can't, some people argue they are in this world somewhere. Uh, you'll see a lot of um, theories out there. Um, but what what is heaven, hell, and purgatory? Like, what mm. what are they in a general idea? Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily, like, what do we experience there, but, like, what are the places of heaven, hell, and purgatory? Mm. So, heaven, hell, and purgatory... So heaven is the location where our Lord desires for all of us to go mm -hmm. with his universal salvific will. And that is, uh, as we'll talk about in a second, I presume, mm -hmm. uh, the beatific vision. Right. So that is life with God. Mm -hmm. Purgatory, as the word comes from, comes from the Latin, purgatorium, um, refers to that purgation. Mm -hmm. That the soul um, of someone before, uh, before the end times, so we're talking about um, some more to die today, uh, or what well, we don't know in the end times will right. be only if that's only known to the Father. Um, uh, but that is purgation of sin. So anyone who dies um, in the state of grace, um, or they die without mortal sin on their soul. Mm -hmm. um, for example, like uh, maybe venial sin or, or some sort of uh, imperfection. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk about that more. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but yes. So yeah, it's so a, the, the purgation. The purgation of the of soul those things, yeah. of those things yeah. um, to live in heaven with their Lord, mm -hmm. be it uh, be to vision in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then hell is um, the location which which humans we can choose to go, or mm -hmm. the devils as well uh, at the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. But it's the location where we completely separate ourselves from our Lord. Hmm. Okay. Where we, we choose our own will and our own right. self over God. Now, are these places physical? So, yes. So they, yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. Go ahead. Ex explain. <laughs> yes. So it's a, it's a difficult question mm -hmm. because in some sense, we want to say they're not. Mm -hmm. but, but we realize by, by the fact that our Lord was this, um, ascended into heaven. And our Blessed Mother was assumed into heaven. And then full body, right? Yeah. Full body. Yeah. yeah, body and soul. Yeah. Um, and then some of, depending on how you look at it, some of the, the saints of the Old Testament, some mm -hmm. of the prophets... Um, also, it went up body and soul to heaven. Mm -hmm. um, so, body yes. and soul. Right. So, they, so, they are, since there is a body, it, it is a physical place, mm -hmm. right? Um, it may, and I'm, it's probably not visible to our eyes on earth, which, I mean, obviously it isn't. Yeah. No one has seen or heard, right, as scripture says, mm -hmm. um, until you go there. Um, so, but we can say because Mary and Jesus are there and their bodies are there. There are physical places. Mm -hmm. Hell, uh, you know, at the end times, uh, bodies will return to everyone in both places, heaven and hell. Exactly. Right? So hell is also a physical place. Right? Now, we'll talk about hell a little bit because is it created by God? <laughs> um, but we'll talk about that later on. Um, but yeah, so we know these are physical places. Purgatory is a little different though, right? Because purgatory is, is not eternal. Yeah, it's not eternal, no. So purgatory is actually not a physical mm -hmm. place. Our bodies actually don't go to purgatory. Um, so it's actually just a state, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not a physical place. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's dive into the first one. Okay. Heaven. What is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it just a place in the clouds? Is it um, a place where um, people wear white robes and fat babies fly around? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yes, heaven, um, another way of referring to heaven is um, for the souls that go there, and, or, and then we're talking about uh, eschaton as well, mm -hmm. um, it's a beatific vision. Um, so the blessed... What is that word? Beatific. Um, so that means, well, you know, one way of looking at it is, is blessed vision. Mm -hmm. uh, beatus, blessed. Um, blessed vision and it's in reference to the soul that goes to heaven, um, or if we're talking with eschaton, um, body and soul, glorified body. But we'll, you'll get there, as you yeah, mentioned. Yeah. Um, it's the the soul is able to be in the presence of God. And 
when the soul is in the presence of God, it has the perfect peace and joy of being able to gaze at our Lord, um, gaze at God and have perfect fulfillment mm-hmm. and perfect love in every aspect of that soul. Uh, mm-hmm. There's nothing that's missing from it. There's nothing that the soul desires after that. Our, our, soul, our, our, whole, our whole lives are mm-hmm. made to be be with our Lord. Right. Uh, that's why St. Augustine, I think it was St. Augustine, talks about our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. Mm-hmm. And in the most perfect manner in heaven, of where, where the, the person, the soul of the person, is gazing at Almighty God. And all that restlessness that we might have in this world, sin, confusion, conflict, anything, mm-hmm. all of that is gone. It's right. just perfect peace and enjoyment of being in the presence of God. So, yeah, and I mean, as you said, like, it, so summarizing it, heaven is God, right? Heaven is is in the presence of God. It's where God dwells. Um, we're we're in heaven, experiencing God in His fullness, and God is truth goodness and beauty itself right he i mean he's love he's ultimate love so i mean if you can imagine like the person that loves you the most and multiply that by a million um or more More. infinite infinity right (laughs) um the most beautiful thing you've ever seen multiply that by infinity and goodest goodest is not a word but (laughs) Mm. the best thing you've ever seen (laughs) Mm. um or the, the best act the the most good act you've ever seen and multiply that by a million. Mm. And that's what heaven is, right? And on top of that, you're experiencing that with other people? Yes, yeah, the communion yeah. of saints. Uh, right. Yeah. Right, so like anyone, so like, you know, if our family members and our friends and our, obviously the saints are in heaven, but if they go to heaven, we're experiencing that with them, right? Mm. Right, and not only are we experiencing it with them, we're experiencing that in their perfect selves. So, like, we are seeing them without any pain, sorrow, suffering. It's just full joy. So, everyone is full joy um, in the presence of the most amazing thing you've ever seen, which is God, mm. right? Which I think is not the right word to say. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> person, I mean, yes. persons, right? God in, in its entirety, <laughs> yes. right? Um, so, I mean, that's ultimately what heaven is. Do you ever get bored in heaven? Nope. No. Never. Why is that? I mean, if I just, I mean, because heaven is worshiping God, right? Um, and you worship Him with, with all the saints, sorry, the communion of saints. Mm-hmm. Um, to conceptualize that as a human being on earth, right? What, what do we think about? <laughs> we, I mean, we think about going to church, right? Mm. Um, and for some people, including myself, sometimes I do get bored in church, mm-hmm. right? It, it happens sometimes. I shouldn't, right? I'm working my way towards not getting bored in church or getting distracted in church. But how can we say heaven is not like that mm. in that sense? I guess partially because we're a perfect state, right? <laughs> and so we, like, we, we have learned to enjoy worshiping in, in a way that's not, um, um, I guess, faulted in exactly, any way. Exactly, yeah. Um, but in another way, it's also, it's more than that, right? Because you're in the presence, right? Um, mm-hmm. We're no longer on a journey yeah. anymore. We are there. We've found success. We finished the race. We made it to heaven, mm-hmm. right? Um, so it's it's eternal satisfaction in the fact that also heaven is not in time, right? So yeah. the joy you experience in the moment, it's a moment, it's a, the moment is itself like forever mm. right that's right. that's right um so yeah i mean and we also know that heaven will be the new earth in some ways right like he will redeem heaven and earth and heaven will be the new earth mm-hmm. um do you know anything about that you know i haven't read enough of it to be honest yeah um I haven't either, um, but we, I know there is something, and maybe there is not much said on it because it's it's a theory. Mm-hmm. Um, well, not a theory. It's, it's a fact, but it's also like an unknown fact. Yeah, our, our Lord talks an, about a new heaven and a new earth. Right. So mm-hmm. it is kind of a, a redeeming. So, I mean, you, the way you, one could think about it is because heaven is a physical place, right? It's this paradise 
as God intended it to be, mm. right? Humans were meant to be on earth in this paradise forever with God. And he's redeeming that and making it even better by being, by being uniting heaven and earth. Mm. So this physical place with this eternal, eternal place um, and making it, it's all, it's all glory. So maybe there will be, you know, grass, trees and stuff in heaven. Um, we don't know for sure because again, no, I have seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, true. But everything would be in its perfect state. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, heaven is a physical place. It's eternal, it's eternal happiness, all right? So I think, any yeah. other comments on heaven? It, it could go on forever, but it could go forever because it is forever. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think I think that's a that's a good basis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, when people die, let's say I die, mm. right? I am, I struggle with things. Mm -hmm. I um, I've committed venial sins. Um, I try. Mm -hmm. I've tried. I've tried. I've gone to confession for things I for mortal sins. Um, what happens to me mm. when I die? Like because I'm not perfect yet, and every, as we said before, everyone who's in heaven, everyone who's in heaven is perfect. Mm -hmm. So what happens to me when I die? Yeah, so yeah, so we were mentioning a little bit earlier about the the reality of purgatory, mm -hmm. um, about this place of purgation. Um, mm -hmm. Is that yeah, once a, a soul uh, dies without a mortal sin on it. Mm -hmm. um, Can you explain mortal sin just so we are all familiar with terms? That's great. That's a great idea. So in in the Catholic Church, we talk about the difference between, and this comes even back from sacred scripture and Saint Paul. Uh, venial sin uh, versus mortal sin. Uh, by mortal sin, um, uh, just a simple way of thinking about it before we get into particulars, is that uh, mortal death, it can die. Mm -hmm. So when, um, when someone commits a mortal sin, the connection with our Lord, um, by means of the person, not by means of our Lord, cuts off that relationship with our Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so it's immortal. It's a, it, the person is their, their spiritual life. One one could say is dead. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they lose their spirit, their soul. Right. But that's one way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, talking about it. Whereas a venial sin um, uh, is is not a, the same thing as a mortal sin. Where it's still sin, because mm -hmm. um, sin is an offense against God um, in some manner, um, in choosing ourselves over over God. Mm -hmm. I guess is another way you could look at it. Um, but it's not. Com it doesn't completely cut off our relationship with our Lord. Right. It might damage it or weaken it, but it doesn't completely cut it off. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a general right. distinction yeah. between the two. Yeah, and then the, I guess to just the, summarize the, the church's teachings on it would be that it's something that you have to do with full knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right, so you have to know it's wrong. Yep. Full consent, meaning no one and or no circumstances forcing you to do this. Mm -hmm. And it has to be a grave matter, so it has to be something serious. It can't just, you know, like stealing, taking your, your friend's pen in class wouldn't necessarily be a serious sin, unless there's something tied up to it. But um, in general, like just a random pen wouldn't be a serious sin. So like, but stealing, breaking into someone's house um, and stealing all their stuff, that's a little bit more serious, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, so yeah, so mortal sins, um, essentially are, is knowing something's wrong, yeah. choosing to do something wrong, and knowing that this is something that would separate me from God, mm -hmm. and doing it anyway. Yeah. Um, so essentially you're just choosing, I'm, I just don't want to be part of God. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care what God teaches. Mm -hmm. I don't care what he has to say. I know this is wrong. I know this is going to offend him, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. Um, so why wouldn't, I mean, is, I mean, mm -hmm. if you just think about it logically, like why wouldn't that separate us from God? Right, it's like me with a friend. If I decide like to, um, my friend has this, um, I don't know, I keep talking about stealing, stealing is the easiest thing to talk about. But my friend has this, uh, this little chest that his grandfather gave him. He knows he, like this is like a prized possession of his grandfather and like um, he loves it. I think it's a really cool looking chest, All right? I don't really care about his feelings. I don't care about mm -hmm. how, what attachment he has. I care about what I want. I know taking this would, would ruin our, our, our relationship. I don't really care because I'd rather have that anyway. So I take it, boom, ruins relationship, right? Why wouldn't our friendship st still exist? Like, of course it broke our, our relationship, mm. right? 
Um, that's not to say that you can't ask for forgiveness, right? Because yeah. you can, we have confession, and God is all merciful and loving and wants us to be in relationship with him. Exactly. Um, God never breaks his relationship with us. We, we break our relationship with him. Yes. Right? Um, so God's always reaching out to us to try to bring us back in, and that's why he gave us the sacrament of confession. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but if we die in the state, which we'll talk about later on, that's hell. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about someone who dies with sins that are, you know, not either either done, not knowingly, we're forced to do it, or we're, weren't grave matters like taking pens or, you know, um, blowing stop signs, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, things that make us imperfect, right? Because mm-hmm. we're things that like don't perfect us, they don't, they don't make us better. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they don't make us better, they're making us worse, and which means we're not ready for heaven. <laughs> yes. Right? So purgatory is, is essentially God saying, I love you so much that I want you to be your perfect self in heaven. Yes. Therefore, here is this place of purifying so that you can, when you get to heaven, you can you can enjoy it to its fullest. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's spot on. Right. And I think we get, so the Catholic tradition also has a lot of misconceptions about purgatory. Um, mm. Do you have any insight on some of those misconceptions? Or I'll, maybe I'll, I'll start it and then you can, you can add on. All right. Some of the, um, is a lot of, um, and these are um, revelations to people, right, um, who have seen. Now, the church teaches that revelations are not doctrine or dogma. Private right? revelations. Private revelations are not, uh, yeah, sorry, private, private revelations <laughs> 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 are not uh, dogma um, or um, doctrine or, by any means, right? Um, but they are important to the church and the life of the church. Um, some of these revelations have had, you know, images of purgatory being, like, mis- mistaken for hell. Like, all this torture and, mm. and torment. While maybe that might be true, the church has never taught that. The church, basis, the basic teachings of purgatory are this place of transition transformation. That's, that's the basic teaching, is this is a place where you are going to go through to prepare yourself for heaven, right? Just getting rid of any baggage that you may have from earth. Yes. So that you can experience heaven to its to its best ability, is that painful? Yes, probably. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Think it's about think purgation. About, if you think about purgation, that's another way of talking about it. It's a fire. Right. It, it's a, a burning. Uh, not the same type as hell. Uh, right. Right. Um, but but a, a burning away or a cleaning away of that yeah that which is imperfect in us. Right. Right. And it's again the church shouldn't say it's a literal fire or. Either way, it says, I mean, th- I mean, just think about this. Like when you are trying to get rid of a sin, mm-hmm. right? Something that you like, let's say you, um, I don't know. Let's just say you're addicted to video games, right? Mm. Obviously, that's, I mean, it's not a, it could be a serious sin in some situations. Yeah, depending on the game. Depending on the game, depending on like how much time you're spending on it, depending if you're ignoring like going to church on Sundays or you spend yeah, time with God yeah. intentionally to play this video game, all right? But you decide to make a change, like, I want to get rid of this, all right? Is that gonna be hard? Yeah. Is it gonna be painful? Yes, yeah. it's, it's, all these things are gonna be painful. And that's also why purgatory might be a little painful, is because you gotta get rid of these things that you're attached to. Mm. Um, these things that don't make you perfect. Yeah. Um, and that's one, theory of how what the pain is in, mm-hmm. in purgatory there's other theories and that's the one i like to hear but yeah. and maybe it's wrong but mm. um but i think that's a, a good way to look at it it's like yeah purgatory is at heart it's a journey mm. right it's a journey towards heaven um now can i do good actions in purgatory can i can i try to like uh you know like make up for the actions i did on earth and like try to get myself to heaven yeah no no you or yes no you cannot <laughs> no, you can, okay um yeah this is why in the catholic church and something every year i've been in seminary so for six years now i've learned more and more fully how much this is part of catholic church teaching and tradition and that is the the importance and responsibility of all catholics and christians and anyone of good faith um but particularly for us catholics recognizing having the fullness of the truth of of what our Lord taught 
um, and what he revealed is that we need to pray for the souls in purgatory mm -hmm. because they cannot merit their own, um, they cannot merit their own salvation mm -hmm. or, or going to heaven. Um, can, sorry, I'm interrupting, but can you explain what the word merit means mm -hmm. in regards to salvation? Of course. Um, just to clarify that of term. Of course. Yeah, so um, yeah, another, another term we talk about in Catholicism is this word about merit. Uh, which is referencing that we can do good actions or, um, or prayerful actions. Yeah, or prayerful fasting, actions, something. good action, fasting, yeah. um, uh, just going to, going to daily mass, all these different things, mm -hmm. offering up sac sacrifices, like our moms probably told us growing up, <laughs> just offer it up. Yeah. Um, all these things can be called meritorious actions, mm -hmm. which means that, um, uh, that, uh, by doing those actions, our Lord and His love and mercy, who wants to bestow grace upon us, can use those actions uh, to bestow grace upon our own souls, or upon others, um, or both, um, or by extension of this, the souls in purgatory. Mm. Um, the souls in purgatory, uh, they're in this state, as you mentioned, um, they cannot merit. So they can't, once they're in purgatory, they're being purified. Mm -hmm. um, but they can't do actions by themselves to receive extra grace and merit to get to heaven quicker, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. So by that, um, we as Catholics, we can pray for these souls and do actions of charity um, for these souls so that they can, by, by our merits of our own good actions, they can be purified to get to heaven that much, yeah, much quicker. Yeah, and part of that, why they can't merit is because they don't have the body anymore. Yes. Right. I mean, they they can't actually do physically good actions yeah. anymore. Um, so like, and the, so like I said before, the body needs the soul. The, the body is the person. Hmm. The soul is the person. But you need both to be a person. Like there's yeah. But right. When the soul separates from the body, yes, it, it can last eternally, but it's still incomplete, right? Yes. Um, it's still incomplete, and it can, but it can live on forever, um, and go to the, go to these one of these three places, right? Um. And purgatory is it's the soul. The soul's there, and it can't make any good actions because it has no body to do it. So it can't animate anything to make a good action. Yep. Right? Exactly. So it's like, I can't. There's not, oh, there's a table. Or here's here's a person. Let me go. Who's sick? Let me go care for them. Mm. I have no way of moving. I have, like, nothing. Like, I have no yeah. body to, to, to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're really just your immaterial self. Right, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what, uh, not kind of that is what purgatory is. Mm -hmm. Right, um, it's this place of transition, transformation where your soul is undergoing, and that's why it's important to pray for the souls in purgatory because yeah. we still have our bodies, we still can do good actions, so we can still um, help those in purgatory. Now, yes, meriting. You know, we 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 do these good actions. We we um, offer prayers. We um, go to go to mass. Um, we live good lives. Mm. Um, living a good life is also meritorious. Yeah. Right. Um, does that mean that we earn our way to heaven, or like I thought God already did that? Did mm. Jesus already die on the cross? He, he already the, died on the cross. It's the big Protestant question. Yes, yeah, it's a big Protestant <laughs> question. Which I've taken a lot of classes. We've talked about this. Um, but yes, but see, this is this was a heresy of the church uh, that there are uh, members in the church before. Um, that we can earn our own salvation, which we cannot do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all salvation is received through Christ. Um, but we can conform ourselves more perfectly to his will by doing these meritorious actions, by the grace that he gives us to do these actions. Mm -hmm. um, so. Right. I mean, like Christ even said, like, um, he wants us to be like him. Right? Yes. He wants us to, to be like Christ. Like, um Love one another as I have loved you, right? So we mm -hmm. have to kind of be like Christ to do that, right? Yeah. Um, so are any of us like Christ? No. <laughs> um, I was so, going, what are you going to say there? <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, no, but like, we're not. So like, meriting is getting us closer towards Christ. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we can ignore that completely, right? And say like, mm. um, I don't care that you died for me. I don't care that you give me this grace. I want to do my own thing. Mm. And that's where we get to the topic of hell. hell, which is a very odd term because it's a very English term. 
Mm. Um, hell has different meanings, I mean, because it's very broad. But in the Bible, there's two two terms, Hades and, Geth- and Gehenna, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I don't want to go too even that. We're going to talk about Gehenna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gehenna is what hell is. All right? When we hear the word hell, this is what we actually think of. Mm-hmm. Uh, we hear uh, Gehenna is the place of eternal fire, eternal damnation. This is where uh, Satan and his angels and, well, Satan and demons now yes. um, go and where people who deny God go. Yeah. Right? So explain what this terribly sounding place is. Mm. <laughs> and is it real? It is real. Very yeah. much so. Um, it's such a good thing that we have this opportunity to talk about hell because I think so frequently, um, even in Catholicism, we talk about like fall of fire and brimstone and mm-hmm. then as like almost like a joke mm-hmm. um, or that back before the council or something, they talked a lot about this, um, that, that hell existed, but now we've kind of got past that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that hell doesn't exist. And that that's wrong. Mm-hmm. We're lying to ourselves and to everyone who we 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 act like or talk to like in that manner. And we're also like ignoring and God. We're, we're ignoring our Lord. And exactly. His word, like it says in the scripture. Um, the person, I mean, I've heard, I mean, people have heard this all the time. The person who says hell most in the Bible is Jesus. Or mm-hmm. Gehenna, most in the, in the Bible, is mm-hmm. Jesus, right? Um, so, I mean, when you say hell is not real, yeah, right, that is directly denying what Jesus says. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, hell is a very real place, and it's a reality of the church. Um, but keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's why I'm glad we have this opportunity to talk about it, just mm-hmm. to reinforce the reality that it does exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and when people say yeah, fire and brimstone or, or things of that sort, it truly is eternal suffering, mm-hmm. it's eternal pain. Um, and you can look at it from different manners, this pain and suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that we committed these sins, these mortal sins against our Lord, mm-hmm. um, so it's it's the the pain or like the the fires you could say yeah um, and then um, also by extension that you could also say uh, the torment tor- uh, being tormented by devils and stuff mm-hmm. um, so there's that aspect you can look about that is eternal pain and suffering mm-hmm. and then there's the other reality that that hell is the one location uh, correct me if my theology is wrong mm-hmm. that. We have chosen to separate ourselves completely from our Lord. Right. Yes. Um, where uh, here on, on earth, we still, um, you know, we can ch- we can do sins and separate ourselves in, in certain respects from our Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, but in hell, we are completely separ- we're separated from our Lord. Mm-hmm. So there's the suffering and the pain of just of of any sort of peace that we might receive or joy or the mm-hmm. sense of love. All these things come from our Lord. Mm-hmm. So when we separate ourselves completely from Him, the one who we should love with our whole heart, mind, body, soul, and strength, that's just it's just pain and suffering because mm-hmm. we won't receive any sort of peace or anything because we're not with Him. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that I mean that's exactly. I mean going back to what you said about mortal sin. I yeah. mean, what we say mortal sin was it's choosing to do uh, something wrong uh, with full knowledge full consent yeah it has to be a grave matter and what does that do it separates us from god yeah right so you're choosing to separate yourself from god mm. right if you persist in choosing to like if you continue like if like you're just not sorry for it yeah right at all right and you say i just don't want to be in a relationship with god mm. and you die well that's exactly what what it is because then your the your whole like being right your personhood all right and the point is uh, making an eternal decision because now you're transitioning into the afterlife, which is eternal. Yeah. All right. So when you're transitioning to the afterlife that is eternal, whatever decision you made with how God created you, right, full full human, full body, full soul, is going to now affect your soul in a way that now is eternal because the body is no longer there. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Um. So yes, these these the. the uh, 
hell is um, a place of separation from God. Yeah. Right? Now, there are some theologies out there that I've heard from reliable priests, um, as in more Eastern thought, and you know, I'm Eastern Catholic, so I, he I hear these things, mm. that the same love that um, the, the righteous experience in heaven is the same love that torments those in hell. Because mm. God can't stop loving, right? Um, this is his nature, right? So does God still love those in hell? Yes. Of course, he of course yes. Do they love God? No, that's why they're there. Yeah. Right? So that love that we experience, that hopefully we experience mm -hmm. in heaven, um, that love that we experience in heaven uh, of joy and, and, right, and just experiencing mm -hmm. God in his full glory, right? Because we chose him and this is what we, we, we desired um, with our life and actions. It's the same thing that like Torrance chose in hell. He's like, I don't want this, but I can't get rid of it. Yeah. Because it's always there. Yeah. Um, so, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a valid theology. It's not. It's not common in the West to hear that mm. language, but it's something that um, is valid. I'm pretty sure. Mm. So, mm. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah. I mean, and is hell eternal? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, God says when. I mean, it says in Scripture. It's like I, I forget. I forget the exact verse in the exact book, and I'm paraphrasing. Mm. But <laughs> um, he says like. The um, I think it has to do with the goats and the sheep, but those who experience everlasting fire are uh, he separates he, he, in the same sentence he uses the everlasting fire versus everlasting um, glory or salvation, mm. right? And since so we know heaven, he's referring to heaven as being eternal. He's also ref and he uses the same word to to describe hell. He's also describing hell to be eternal. Yeah. Right. Um. So we, we see that God is saying straight out, like, hell is eternal, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that, you know, we, we, we don't want to go to. Like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's eternal. People go there, and yeah. if, if, um, they experience that forever, mm. right? Um, now, any follow-up questions on or comments on, mm. on hell or any of it, I guess? Um. No, I, th I think there's so much that could be said, but just, yeah, just, just to reiterate that it is real. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's why we pray for souls. We mm -hmm. pray, we pray that, um, when we, oh, we pray for a good and holy death. So this mm -hmm. is, a, I guess, an important thing to bring up, mm -hmm. uh, with this reality is that we pray for a good and holy death mm -hmm. for ourselves and for others. Mm -hmm. So at the, the moment of our deaths, that by God's grace, we don't die with a state of mortal sin in our souls. Mm -hmm. um, and that we stay, we die in his grace to go to heaven, or or if the Lord wills it, we go to purgatory in preparation mm -hmm. for heaven. Right. So, yeah, that's the last yeah. thing I would say. And I think it's real. You make a good point yeah. here, cause, and I'm not going to go into this because it's a, a controversial thing. But, um, you know, you, we hear the dare, you, dare we hope, right, uh, <laughs> um, uh, theory. Um, but... As Christians, we do hope everyone goes to heaven, right? We do. Right? We do hope. That's why we pray for people at their death. Yeah. Right? And, exactly. And why we say, um, what is it? Um, I'm going blank on the prayer. But anyway, but we do hope any, everyone goes to heaven, right? That's, that is our hope. We do exactly. dare to hope everyone's in heaven. Will everyone go to heaven? Unlikely. No. All right? Um, and, and even Bishop Barron and his controversy, people that uh, attack him, he says I, it, it's unlikely. It's it's it's. Uh, I don't expect people to go to everyone to go to heaven, and that's yeah. exactly um, a reality. It's an unfortunate reality. Yeah. Um, yeah. And very much if you yeah, if you read our Lord mm -hmm. saying um, the narrow way is it's narrow, mm -hmm. and the gate to hell is wide and it's open. Mm -hmm. So we, we we hope for everyone. We pray for everyone. Right. But that's why we talk about eschatology mm -hmm. in the first place. Is the reality that it does exist mm -hmm. and people do go there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah. now that we've finished talking about these three areas, um, I do want to um, talk to parents directly for a second. Oh, time out. I got to go. Oh, you go ahead. Okay. I All figured right. this would be a good stop point because <laughs> yeah. I got yeah, to go. Yeah, no problem. All right. Thanks for joining us. Luke Martin, everyone. Thank you. He's going to be on our podcast from now on. Right. So, <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yep. We'll see you guys. Yep. See ya. All right. All right. So 
real quick, just want to address the parents um, about these topics uh, and talking to your kids about them. All right. So, as we have discussed already, I mean, um, these are important topics. These are the truth of our of our church and our teachings. Um, so it is important to talk to your kids about it. Now, what do we want to focus on? We want to focus on the good, right? We want to focus on heaven, right? We want to have kids experience God's love, right? And not be afraid of him, right? Um, so we, we want to present, like, the glories of heaven, right? Not saying to diminish hell in any way. Not saying don't talk about hell in any way. Right, you sh they should. They should be aware of the the existence of hell and that it is eternal. But we don't want to scare kids to heaven. We want them to experience the love of God that attracts them to heaven. All right. So this is not about oh, let's talk about hell and how bad it is, so that you know you're scared to go there, and therefore you just start doing actions because out of fear. No, we want you to do good actions out of love. All right. That is the goal. All right. We we want to act good out of love for God and love for our neighbor. And by doing that, then you, you're you not only, you know, preparing yourself for heaven, but you're going to live a good and happy life. All right. Um, even in times of suffering, suffering you'll, you, you'll know that this love is what I'm longing for and that I'm willing to persevere through the suffering and the pain to get there. All right. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, so when you're talking to your kids about, like, about these things, you emphasize the importance of God's love and in, in striving towards heaven um, so that we can all um, be there one day, hopefully, God willing, um, be in union with each other and experience that, that glory and the eternal happiness um, and satisfaction that comes in heaven. Um, and I hope this video helps. Uh, next month, we're going to be talking about uh, stewardship and what that means. Um, and um, I hope to... Um, uh, you know, have, have Luke back on, we might have another guest on as well to, uh, talk about what that means as Catholics, um, and how we can, um, be better stewards, uh, of ourselves, of, uh, and of God's creation. Um, so I hope, uh, that would be helpful. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a good day. God bless.